But I'm going to have to ask you this one bat. Your first reheat takeoff or afterburner takeoff in the Hornet. What was that like, getting that kick? It's it's pretty awesome. And mm. um, it, I never thought you'd feel it, you know, especially at the field. Because I had done, like, incentive rides at the ship and yeah. in, in a Super Hornet and things like that. And obviously, a catapult's a catapult. I mean, it's the mm -hmm. coolest roller coaster ride in the world. Cool. But I never thought at the field going down the runway that when you plug the blowers, you would actually feel it. And you do. I mean, it is a, it is a kick in the pants. And, and the story that I tell on that is, uh, you know, we had to, and I'm sure pilots everywhere have to, we had to, during training, we had to keep current, right? Yes. So you had to fly every so many days. And we had a rough stretch of weather and I wasn't on the schedule and it was like eight o'clock in the morning. I'm at my condo on the beach, you know, living the single life, you know, I'm a fighter <laughs> pilot. Yeah. <laughs> and I get a call from the squadron and they're like, hey, you're going to fall out of currency. Could you just come in and and just just go up and do what we would call a one V zero? Just go up by yourself and just just fly the plane around. You're not okay. doing a mission. You're just you're just staying current. And in my head, I'm thinking like, so you want me to hop in my car, drive to base, take a perfectly fine jet out over the ocean, bend the crap out of it and have fun and come back and land. What a pain. And I, yeah. And I'm like. Yeah, no, I could do that. I could do. I mean, like, I, I think I said yes as I was driving away in my car. <laughs> so I get to the squadron and you know, man up the jet. The jet breaks. You know. Oh. And so I call. Yeah, you know, I talk to maintenance. I'm like, do you have any spares? And he's like, sir, we only have one spare, but I don't know if they're going to let you take it. And I'm like, well, why not? He's like, it's the air air show plane. And I'm like, okay. So I call the the duty desk on the radio. I'm like, Hey guys, you know, my, my jets broke. They have a spare, but it's the air show plane. You know, can I take that? And my buddy from flight school, who's now an instructor is sitting on duty. And he's like, he's like, let me check. And they come back and they're like, look, you could take it. He's like, but dude, be careful. And I'm like thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm like come on, man, I'm a pilot. <laughs> like I have three <laughs> combat tours. Like I'm not some nugget just out of flight school. Like give me yeah. a little bit of respect, right? Yes. What I come to find out is the air show plane is the big motor Charlie. So it's single seat Charlie with the bigger motors, so more thrust. And it wow. is completely slicked off. There's no center line tank. There's no nothing on the wings, nothing on the wingtips, no pylons on the wings. I mean, it was the slickest you could make in F-18 Charlie. And I remember taxiing this thing out. It felt light taxiing. Just oh, really? Back you can tell the out. difference. It was weird. And I taxi onto the runway. And if you look at where Virginia Beach is and Oceana is compared to the coastline, it is right there. And I plug the blowers and go. And I turn out over the ocean just on our normal course rules. And I almost broke Mach 1 before I hit the hotel line. No way. That's how fast it was. And I literally, thank God, because I probably wouldn't be talking here with any semblance of my career, <laughs> saw the number. It hit 0.98 Mach in the HUD. And I pulled the power back to idle, threw the speed brakes out, reefed back on the stick just to keep myself from blowing. Because I was wow. pointed at all the hotels at their level as I'm going out. And I was like, wow. I flew. It's funny, I have a picture of the logbook. I flew for 32 minutes and I was out of gas. That's all I had. Uh, it was December. I remember that. It was super cold out. I walked back. I was dripping in sweat because of how much fun I had. I mean, you could pull seven and a half Gs and just hold it in that plane because there was, I mean, it had so much power, the thrust. It was so much fun. And, um, but yeah, you absolutely felt the power, 100%. And you mentioned the 7.5 there. Is that actually the limit? Or could you, as a pilot, was there a switch where we're like, okay, I'm going to kick this switch off. I can do 9G. So um, there's, a, there's a, a paddle in the Hornet. And it's on the stick a little bit lower down. Um, and you can actually override it. And okay. it'll give you whatever the airframe will give you at that point, I guess. Um, I never pulled the paddle. I never had a need to pull the paddle. We never really trained um, to pull the paddle in my fleet squadron, I had one opportunity that I should have pulled the paddle. Um, <laughs> we were doing training and um, I came very close to a midair uh, between myself and my skipper as we mm -hmm. were doing kind of kind of this. It's a long not to get into the, the tactics, but I pushed over to miss the midair as he went over the top of me. And I guess the adrenaline dump of like, oh, my God, I almost hit him. And then I realized like, oh, crap, here's the desert. And I just both hands on the stick 
pulled back um, for everything that plane would give me. Yeah. Never pulled the paddle, which would have made sense. Uh, my rad out went below 100 feet um, in the HUD. And, and I brought it back and we debriefed it. You know, in Navy fashion, you make mistakes. And, and I was at fault as much as he was at fault, as much as some of the systems of the jet were at fault. Um, and we fessed up to it. And that's you learn from it. Mm -hmm. But after we're done doing all that, our training officer is looking at the tape and he goes, dude, why don't you pull the paddle? <laughs> and I was like, I thought about it. And that's the thing, like in that extremis, in that time compression, I literally thought about doing it. And he goes, why didn't you do it? And I was like, I didn't want to get in trouble. And he's like, so you would have rather flown Die. into the ground. And I was like, <laughs> why wouldn't I gotten in trouble? Like literally that's how my brain was wired. Wow. I was like, I'd rather die than get in trouble. And I mean, so which is stupid. It's completely ridiculous. But, um, but yeah, it was the one time I probably should have pulled it and I didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, but other than that, you know, the, you know, for the most part, the, the Hornet's a really smart plane, the Super Hornet even more so, um, to where it knows based on your loadout and stuff, how much you can actually pull. Mm -hmm. So you just, you just use the systems. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah.